okay guys now in this video we will be going to talk about uh, the transamination reactions now transamination reactions are the fourth, uh, last type of reactions I am going to talk about uh, regarding this amino acid metabolism now as again we are uh, taking examples of the name because names are actually helping us to understand the type of reactions now here uh, the name suggests transamination the transfer trans means the transfer of aminations means the amino group so here we are dealing with the transfer of amino group from one amino acid to another amino acid that's why it's called the transamination now <coughs> so we know that if we delete the amino group if we take amino group from amino acid that amino acid will be converted into a keto acid right so here we must have one donor amino acid and one acceptor amino acid which is not exactly full uh, amino acid it's a keto acid okay so one amino acid another one will be keto acid for this reaction so we must have this criteria right we must fulfill this criteria we must have one donor amino acid which will act as a donor and the second one is uh, the keto acid which is acted as the acceptor so here the amino acid one is the donor amino acid two is the keto acid now the enzyme here is involving is a transaminase okay or amino acyl transferase or amino transferase or transaminase whatever you are talking about okay so the basic goal is that we are going to take this amino group from here we are going to attach this amino group to this carbon and convert this keto acid into an amino acid so you convert this keto acid into amino acid and this donor amino acid will be converted into a keto acid that's all that's all about the reaction just shuffling just shuffling here okay so I am just denoting you a very important uh, point is that this is the second one I'm denoting with it red this is the second one and this is the first one okay so uh, the second one was keto acid in very first step or uh, at the beginning of the reaction it takes this amino group from this donor amino acid and it will be converted into amino acid from this keto acid it will, co it will be converted into amino acid and that amino acid which is previously a normal amino acid will be converted into keto acid as it donates this amino group that's the basic and very very fair step very simple reactions actually okay so <coughs> now the fate of this amino group which is being transferred there are two metabolic role for this amino group one is the anabolic role, another one is the catabolic role. The ami anabolic role is that it may got into the biosynthetic pathways because that it is generating the different keto acids as well as amino acid. It can go through the process of uh, biosynthesis and it will produce different biosynthetic materials. And the second uh, or catabolic role is that it may get converted into nitrogenous wastes like ammonia, which is a dangerous waste for our body it will be producing this nitrogenous waste uh, through which uh, which will be converted into urea and be released from the body so it is again acting as the dual role one is the biosynthetic role second one is the uh, the excretion role okay or, or uh, relieving of toxicity okay now what are the properties of this amino uh, this enzyme transaminase or amino transferase now these enzymes are highly specific for alpha ketoglutarate which accepts this amino so the keto acid we are utilizing here are very very important and the enzymes are very very much Im very very much uh, what you can say the specific for the activity or for addition with this alpha ketoglutarate okay and also they are highly stereoscope uh, stereo specific towards the amino acids which act as the alpha Im amino group donor okay so they are uh, specific towards the keto acids and they are also specific or stereo specific towards the amino acids so they are very very specific with their reactions or with their reactants so the selection of the reactants here are very very much important now this reaction is freely reversible so it's a reversible reaction having an equilibrium constant of about one okay this enzyme requires a PLP as a coenzyme again pyridoxal phosphate is in important for the reaction steps we have seen pyridoxal phosphate in case of the trans uh, carb uh, we have seen this in case of the decarboxylation you can also see this in case of the oxidative deamination reactions now we are seeing the importance of this PLP in this transamination reaction okay now uh, the structure of PLP is given here so pyridoxal phosphate is a derivative of pyridoxine which is a vitamin B6 metabolic role is that it can act as coenzyme for transaminase and amino transferase as well as metabolic role uh, or cofactor for uh, uh, the decarboxylase enzyme too okay let's move on 
So this PLP can be modified covalently or can be non-covalent modifications can be done but uh, this PLP is actually attached with the enzyme via the lysine residue of the enzyme and then this PLP will exchange the enzyme rea enzyme with this amino acid and the second step it will provide this amino acid it, it will it will uh, leave the amino acid uh, it will leave the enzyme uh, uh, sorry it will leave the amino acid and get the enzyme to produce the enzyme PLP complex again so this is the overall mechanism of uh, the transamination steps uh, there are two steps here one step is uh, this uh, internal uh, aldimine he is uh, there and also it will generate the ammonia here and then uh, external aldimine will be produced and then this external aldimine will be converted into quinonoid complex okay i'm not go again in encouraging you, you to know this reaction detailly but you must know the process that one amino acid one uh, keto acid so amino acid will be converted into keto acid and the keto acid will be converted into amino acid that's the basic goal of this reaction Okay, this reaction is multi-step reaction again we are seeing it. The basic part is that PLP is involving in all the reactions they are carrying out. And PLP is modifying it itself into something else, then finally it will go back to its normal conformation. Okay, so this is the overall net reaction. Uh, so, uh, so here the internal aldimine is there, donor amino acid and external aldimine will be produced and quinonoid complex and ketamine. And again this is the conversion. Okay, and they'll produce this product of alpha keto acid, and uh, along with this PMP will be produced pyridoxamine phosphate. So the pyridoxal phosphate will be converted into pyridoxamine phosphate by taking up the amino group, right? So this is a very very important step is here. So PLP will be converted into PMP in this case. If you don't want to know that step in detail, uh, no problem, but just know these things because these are important. Okay. So example of transamination via this glutamate oxaloacetate transaminase. So again glutamate is alpha keto acid here, aspartate is the amino acid here, so this is the amino acid and this is the alpha keto acid, this is keto acid, uh, sorry, keto acid. Now keto acid will be converted into amino acid which is glutamate here and this amino acid will be converted into oxaloacetate which is a keto acid. Oxaloacetate is a keto acid so previously aspartate which is an amino acid will be converted into a keto acid which is oxaloacetate <laughs> and previously which was a keto acid which is ketoglutarate will be converted into a glutamate which is an amino acid. That's it. By the enzyme GOT or glutamate oxid uh, oxaloacetate transaminase. Again, there are also GPT is there, which is the glutamate pyruvate transaminase, uh, which will convert alanine uh, into pyruvate, which is a pyruvate is a keto acid. Alanine will be converted into pyruvate. Again, alpha keto acid, which is ketoglutarate, will be converted into glutarate. So, whatever reaction we are dealing with, most of the times, uh, the keto acid or the acceptor of this amino group, most of the times are the alpha ketoglutarate. So, that's why it's very, very important. And the enzyme is very, very specific for this alpha ketoglutarate. Now this is about some clinical applications of this transamination. Normally what happens, transaminations are used in diagnostic examination of heart and liver damages. Because if heart and liver are damaging, in those cases the change in these enzymes like uh, glutamate, uh, gl glutamate oxaloacetate transferase or glutamate pyruvate transferase can be there. So in those cases we can check the SGOT, SGPT enzyme concentration in the body. If the percentage of these enzymes are getting very very high in those situations we can say that then uh, th that the body or, or that individual is infected by any kind of heart or liver damages in many times uh, in many cases of jaundice and liver infections uh, doctors will supervise us to go through this SGOT SGPT counts right so that's where lies the importance okay so that's it and I hope it is uh, it will help you thank you